Elections herald change in the United Kingdom with a Labour landslide. But also there are some changes in France and Iran, while the campaign trail hits a shocking turn in the United States. So should New Delhi worry about losing friends in high places? And how will results change the geopolitical landscape for India? Hello and welcome to Worldview at the Hindu with me, Sohasini Heather. Now, if 2024 is the year of elections with 64 countries going to vote worldwide, then the past week has been particularly interesting with four of the world's most prominent leaders watching results of campaigns very closely. Who were they? The US President Biden, Iranian Supreme Leader Khamenei, French President Emmanuel Macron, and of course, the biggest loser this week, United Kingdom Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. His Conservative Party was crushed in a landslide by the Labour Party, which is led by Keir Starmer. That won the biggest mandate since Tony Blair in 1997. It ended the Conservative Party's 14-year, four-term run with five Conservative Prime Ministers from David Cameron, Boris Johnson, Theresa May, Liz Truss, and then Rishi Sunak. Now, the Labour Party leader, Keir Starmer, is himself a former human rights lawyer and a prosecutor. He will now lead one of the strongest majorities in the British Parliament. Another strong showing, certainly more than the, the past, has come from the ultra-right Reform Party, led by Nigel Farage. He's accused of outright bigotry and a very tough anti-immigration line. It's probably going to put some pressure and drive some of the policies of the new Labour government as well. So let's just take a look at what does the UK loss of Rishi Sunak really mean for India? To begin with, it is the loss of Britain's first Indian origin Prime Minister. And many had taken a lot of pride from the fact that Sunak had become Prime Minister at all in the United uh, Kingdom, the son of immigrants uh, from uh, other parts of the world, but of Indian origin. Now, secondly, the new government will take a different line on immigration. This is a, a red line, really, for all governments. It's promised to appoint special prosecutors to crack down on illegal immigrants, sign returns agreements with many countries to send back those that they find have come in illegally. Also, Labour's past policies have always been a bit of a problem for India. Traditionally, the Conservative Party has been seen more as a uh, pro-India party. And though Keir Starmer has actually disavowed old positions of Labour on Kashmir, on Khalistan, the worry is that many Labour members of Parliament advocating anti-India stands, those remain. The fourth, the India-UK FTA that has been in the works for years has still not been completed. The Labour Party says it's committed to the FTA. The question is, will it reopen the chapters already negotiation. Now, at a, a, an India Global Conference just a week ago, the shadow minister for Labour, uh, who's expected to be the foreign minister, David Lamy, was very optimistic about completing the FTA soon. Listen in. Many Diwalis have come and gone without a trade deal, and too many businesses have been left waiting. So my message to Minister Sithraman and Minister Goyal is that Labour is ready to go. Let's finally get our free trail deal done, finished, over, and we move on. And India is not just a priority for our leader. India is a priority for me. I promise you, I will be in India if we get over the line before the end of next month. Promising to come to India as well. Now across the channel, France is also seeing a second round of parliamentary elections that could severely dent President Macron's grip on governance and certainly given him a scare. The elections, which were called three years early, were announced after Macron's centrist coalition was defeated badly in June's European Parliament elections. It was defeated by the right-wing national rally, Le Pen's party. In the first round, Macron's party, in fact, came third to both the ultra-right uh, Rally National as well as the leftist combine of communists, socialists, uh, Green Party and others. Now, if the RN, the Rally National, were to win, it would be the first time a right-wing party, once even accused of being anti-Semitic and fascist, 
would control the French Parliament since World War II. So this is quite a significant one. So what does the surge of the right in France mean for India? One, if Macron is weakened by the results, that may impact France-India ties as well. Certainly as president, Macron has been a major friend of India's. He stepped in, remember, this year to be the Republic Day chief guest after US president declined, so really at the last minute. He has signed a number of major agreements with India over the past five years. We've spoken about those at Worldview. Then secondly, the immigration question again. France had begun to take a very progressive look at immigration uh, compared to the past, particularly bringing new students in, policies making English more acceptable uh, as a spoken language. Rally National is certainly expected to change that along with stricter immigration policies. Remember, it will be in Parliament, uh, not yet in the presidency. Uh, third, that Rally National's leader, Marine Le Pen, has advocated a France first economic policy. And while she has softened her anti-European Union position, it, this might make trade negotiations with India for the India EU BTI that much more difficult. The fourth is a legislative gridlock that could follow from a hung parliament like we saw in the first round, which would make every negotiation difficult at a time when France and India are poised to really have a surge in relations, whether it's on strategic ties, trade, nuclear and renewable energy or defense uh, projects, especially if there is dissonance between the presidency and the prime minister and the parliament there. Let's turn then to an election we haven't followed as closely perhaps in Iran which is going to polls after that shocking helicopter crash that killed President Ibrahim Raisi and Iran's foreign minister. Also, after the conflict with Israel took a very sharp turn uh, and the first election since those massive anti-hijab women's rights activist demonstrations that we saw across the country there. Now, the first round of Iranian presidential elections actually had two startling outcomes. One, a very low turnout, about 40% only. That's being read as unhappiness with the government, a boycott of polls uh, by voters unhappy with the regime, with conservatism, with the economic distress as well. The second startling outcome that it was actually in the first round, Masood Pezeshkian, a surgeon who was a minister of health earlier with Khatami, seen as a reformist and one who has advocated for more engagement with the West, he won more votes than the Khamenei, the, uh, the supreme leader's protege, Saeed Jalili, who's Iran's former nuclear negotiator as well. So here's what India should really watch out for with this outcome. One, a win for Khamenei's choice Jalili would no doubt signal continuity and the same policies that India has forged with his predecessor, especially in terms of projects like Chabahar. However, Jalili's win would also mean a continuation of US sanctions on Iran that are already becoming a big cause for worry again for India. Conversely, a reformist win could bring in some relief when it comes to sanctions, but also internally in terms of women's rights. Remember, Pezeshkian had publicly criticized the regime for the death of women's activist Masa Amini for not wearing the hijab. Real power, of course, remains with the supreme leader and the clergy. So no major policy changes can be accepted, expected. So let's turn finally to uh, uh, the election that's still some months away in the United States. But the campaign there hit a dramatic note this week. And it's worth talking about in the aftermath of a disastrous drubbing um, of President Joseph Biden by former President Donald Trump in a debate. And many are now calling for 82-year-old Biden, who appeared infirm and incoherent in that debate, to step aside in favor of another Democratic candidate as polls are showing Trump far ahead. Biden is said to be considering his options, but he's still expected to make a go of it, make another show of strength in interviews and also in hosting a mega NATO summit with Indo-Pacific leaders as well as Ukraine President Zelensky next week. So that's worth watching out for in Washington. And what does it all mean for India? One, India has dealt with both the Biden administration and the Trump administration and strategic and defense ties have improved with both. However, the Biden administration seems to be getting tougher on India's Russia ties. And Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow, for example, next week will be seen dimly. While Trump has been seen as softer on Russia in the past, he also brings with him unpredictability and open threats of the kind India saw with Iran sanctions. And India may have to make some tough choices if he was to do better. On the economy as well, Trump will drive a harder deal, while Biden is seen as more problematic in the issue of, on the issue of human rights and the ongoing Panun case on alleged transnational repression 
by uh, allegedly by Indian government agents. So what's worldview stake? The larger theme from elections in the UK and France and Iran and the US is this, that economic distress, inflation are really underlying issues for people everywhere. And they are spurring democratic change, a resultant strengthening of conservative right-wing values, including anti-immigration, xenophobia, racism, is a larger worry, even as Indians continue to be amongst the largest groups of illegal immigrants going to, the, to Europe and the United States. These will have a bearing on both bilateral ties as well as India's foreign policy in the future. Let's get you some reading recommendations about what we've been speaking about, but mainly on the UK elections that are top of the mind. Two biographies of the new UK Prime Minister-elect Keir Starmer. Uh, one is written by Tom Baldwin, but there's another one called The Red Knight, the unauthorized biography of Sir Keir Starmer. This is by Michael Ashcroft. Both are quite interesting, short and worth reading. Uh, this is an interesting book on the past few years, the Conservative Party after Brexit, turmoil and transformation by Tim Bale, looking at all the prime ministers uh, in, in the UK. There's a book called Great Britain? Question mark by Torsten Bell, really questioning whether Britain is great right now, the economy in particular, and one called Politics on the Edge by Rory Stewart. He's also the co-host of podcast The Rest is Politics uh, and well worth reading. The Macron Regime, this is about France, the ideology of the new right in France, by Charles de Villeneuve. Uh, and this is interesting because it takes a look at Macron and says he's actually quite right-wing when it comes to issues like security uh, and others um, and worth reading. And then there's Revolutionary Iran, a history of the Islamic Republic by Michael Axworthy, looking at uh, Iran for the last 40 years, not just the revolution, the role of the clergy, but the elected representatives as well. So that's all we have time for here on Worldview. We do hope you join us again from the team. Thanks for watching.